Hi guys, in today's tutorial we're going to be painting a Krieg Lehman Russ from start to finish. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming. If you check the description box down below you'll find a direct link to their web store and every time you purchase anything from that link it greatly helps my YouTube channel so please use the link in the description box below. In today's tutorial we will be painting the Lehman Russ in German Panzer Grey and we will be creating some really nice weathering on the tank as well. As always this is going to be a long tutorial so uh, please grab yourselves a nice hot drink or maybe an ice cold beer and we'll get started with the tutorial. I start off by priming the minutes using Alclad 2's Lacquer Primer Grey. It's very important to note that you have to be well ventilated if you are using this primer. Please make sure that you're wearing a respirator and you're well ventilated. Also the lacquer primer is known as a hot liquid. What that means is that uh, lesser quality airbrushes without PTFE seals will be damaged by the lacquer primer. So please make sure that you have PTFE solvent proof seals in your airbrush. If you can't use lacquer primers by Alclad, then I highly recommend Steinol Res's primers by Badger. Here I'm priming at about 20 psi and I'm making sure I get a nice thin even coverage on the miniature. As I mentioned at the start of the video, we're going to be painting the tank in German Panzer Grey. And this war game set from AK Interactive is absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend this paint set to get um, great results with your German Panzer Grey. We're going to be using the base color, first of all, for uh, painting of the tank. And as you can see, I'm just getting a nice, smooth, even coverage on the tank. I'm laying the base down at about 20 psi and about 4 to 5 inches away from the model and I'm just getting a nice even coverage. Now we're going to use the highlight colour from the set to create some highlights on the tank. 
what you'll see here is that I'm aiming for all the central panels so the center of the doors the center of all the open panels and all of those rivets that are sticking out on the vehicle Now we're going to mask off a panel on the vehicle to create some interest by adding a panel line of paint. It's very important that you use good quality masking tape on your vehicles. Don't use home um, decorating masking tape. The reason for this is when you pull the masking tape off the vehicle, it will probably damage the paint and pull it up. Tamiya masking tape is low tack. What that means is when you remove the masking tape, it won't damage the paintwork underneath. So please make sure that you use good quality masking tape. Well, here I am just working really close to the masking tape as to not get overspray outside of the masking tape area. And I'm just using Vallejo Wolf Grey to get those uh, paint strips down. And here you can see that I'm peeling the masking tape off and as you can see none of that paint is being pulled up and the masking tape is easily removed.
now we're going to varnish the vehicle and there's a few reasons for this one it's going to protect the paintwork which is very important but secondly it's going to enable us to lay down the decals and also a panel line wash and the panel line wash will flow much easier over a gloss surface than it will over a matte surface Here we're going to use Streaking Grime for Panzer Grey by MIG Ammo. It's a really nice enamel product. Now enamel products work much better for washes than acrylic as you're able to remove them off the surface of the vehicle um, shortly after they've dried. I'm also using Odorless Thinner uh, to thin down the Panzer Streaking Grime and the reason for this is I want it to flow better on the surface of the vehicle so I thin down the Panzer Streaking Grime with odorless thinner one to one so one part thinner to one part um, Panzer Streaking Grime here you can see that I'm going around all the panel lines if at any stage that I add too much of the streaking grime, I've got a separate pot of odorless uh, thinner that I can actually mop and wipe away any of the excess stains that I don't want on the surface.
here you can see just as I did before we're just placing down that panzer streaking grime and we're going around all of the little rivets all of the panel lines or anywhere that a panel sticks out from the surface to create some depth to the vehicle We're going to be doing a dry brush uh, in a little while and if we did a dry brush over a glass surface it would catch some of the panels and it would look really messy. It's much better to do a dry brush over a matte surface so here we're going to lay down a matte varnish over the vehicle so we can get a really nice result from the dry brush. We're going to be using Vallejo Game Air Wolf Grey to do the dry brushing. Now I'm going to be using a large round headed brush that's from Artist Opus. You can use a flat headed brush as well and get great results. As you can see I've removed most of the paint on some paper towel which is very crucial to this technique and I'm just lightly brushing over the surface of the tank to catch all the extreme top surface details of the miniature. Now we're going to use AK Interactive's chipping colour from the Panzer Grey set that we showed you at the start of the video. We're going to create some nice subtle chips on the vehicle using some sponge. You can get sponges from blister packs of miniatures and that sort of thing. But I remove most of the paint off on some paper towel and then I'm just hitting the vehicle in areas where I think chips would naturally occur. Now we're going to create some light rush streaks using light rush wash from MIG Ammo. It's really important to note that I'll remove most of the um, light rush off the brush and we're just creating really subtle streaks and we're going around some of the panel lines and some of the rivets just to create a little extra interest on the vehicle.
Now we're going to start painting the tracks on the vehicle. We're going to use AK Interactive's dark tracks from the Panzer Grey set. And as you can see, I'm not too worried about little bits of overspray as that will just look like mud that's been sprayed uh, up on the vehicle from running around on muddy uh, gravel. Now we're going to dry brush Vallejo Game Air Silver on the tracks. This is going to make the tracks look a little bit more realistic and really help the uh, details pop out from the tracks. There is some leather that surrounds the bolt gun on the front of the vehicle. We're going to use Games Workshop's Mournfang Brown to paint the leather. After the leather, uh, Mournfang Brown colour I should say, dries, we then come back in with Games Workshop's Agrax Earthshade and we wash the leather area surrounding the gun. All of the metallics on the vehicle get washed with Vallejo Metal Color Manifold. As you can see, this is a really thin paint, but it gives pretty much one coat coverage. It's made for airbrushes, but don't let that fool you, as as you can see, it hand brush paints beautifully as well. All of the metallics on the vehicle get washed with Agrax Earthshade.
vehicles in my opinion look a lot more realistic if they're actually finished with a satin finish as opposed to matte so i give the vehicle a satin varnish to finish it off and here you can see our finished vehicle i really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial guys and if you have please hit the like button but even better still leave a comment and let me know what you think of the tutorial or maybe what you'd like to see me do in future I want to say a huge thank you once again to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming. Don't forget to check that description box below if you are purchasing anything from Goblin Gaming. As I say, it does help my channel which is great. And lastly guys, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and we'll catch you in the next one.